welcome to the first ever Women's Cycling Show, where we bring you the race roundup, all the latest news and talking points, and bring you right inside the Women's Professional Peloton. I'm Orla Shinoui, this is Rose Manley and Richard Moore, and this is the Tour of Flanders. After the action before, we are in Oudenaarde, the finish town. It's a bit quieter today. I think we've all recovered from the race. We will get to the race action in just a moment. But first, I want to let you know what we've got coming up in the show today. We will be talking about the Tour of Flanders, of course. We'll have interviews from all the top riders. We'll have a look behind the scenes away from the race action. And we'll give you an exclusive look into Canyon Tram, thanks to Tiffany Cromwell. First, though, to the Tour of Flanders. It's the 16th edition of the women's race, one of the most prestigious on the women's calendar. It was taken by Marta Bastianelli of Virtue Cycling this year over Annemiek van Vluten of Mitchelton Scott and Cecily Utrup Ludwig of Bigla. So, guys, what did we think the Tour of Flanders? What did you make of it, Rose? Well, I actually thought it was... I mean, this is my favourite race of the year, pretty much, but I thought it was actually quite quiet, quite conservative for much of the race. It really heated up only in kind of the last... 30k and I think that's partly down to the fact that the course is a little bit different this year so uh, in, they, it's got a new introduction of the Tyenberg which mm. if you're a fan of men's cycling then you'll know that that is Tom Bonin's climb where he's won many of his races from attacks on that climb it's really steep and I think that perhaps the teams were a bit worried about that or the frequency of those really steep climbs right at the end and perhaps they were holding a lot back before they got to that point. And we'll hear from Annemiek van Bluten in a little moment. She referenced this, but I was wondering before the start of the race about the absence of Anna van der Breggen or Anna van der Brecher, which is known around these parts. Um, got something on my throat. Um, <laughs> but the world champion wasn't at the race and uh, Annemiek had said that um, that made the race maybe a little bit too easy and maybe that was part of the reason that it was so conservative. I mean, it's always a funny concept really to non-cycling fans or anybody new to the sport that a race could be too easy for somebody to win. But I think Anna not being here uh, really did change the dynamic of the race, didn't she? I think so and I think it's odd that she wasn't here. Mm. I mean, she's the world champion. This is a huge race for her local team. The Bulls Dolmans are, are sort of a local team. Um, she's been racing in South Africa, a, a mountain bike race. I don't think there are many Bulls Dolmans facilities in South Africa. So I'm, I'm surprised that she wasn't here racing and showing off the rainbow jersey at the Tour of Flanders, which, as you say, is one of the biggest races in the world. And I think it would have changed the race. I mean, uh, when Van Vluten and Van der Breggen are, are absent, the racing can be more interesting, more open. Uh, but we saw a kind of curious race. It was a, a bit muted, I think, yesterday. And there were one or two teams that we didn't really see an awful lot of at all. Uh, Sunweb, for example, they lost Corn Rivera, who has won before quite early on. But yeah, it was a, it was a, a strange kind of quietish race, it felt like. And it almost took to the Paterberg before we had that whittling down of the final three before it got interesting. And, and it was then an interesting watch, I guess, between those three to see who would finish on the top of the podium. It looked at one stage like Cecily Utrup Ludwig or a few times maybe that she was dropping out the back, but she did manage to stay on. What did you think of the final three, the top three then? Well, I think it was it was obvious that Bastielli was the strongest finisher. So it's always obvious when it's over. Well, I think so. I said it before the finish. Uh, I've got witnesses to that. Um, but no, I mean she was the fast finisher. So it, it was surprising, I guess, have, having seen how Van Vluten won Strada Bianca a few weeks mm. ago, how strong she was there, really at a different level to everybody else. I suppose it was surprising she wasn't able to drop Bastianelli on a couple of these climbs, um, Paterberg especially. She did have a good go. Uh, but Bastiana is just going really, really well. And if you can't lose her, she's probably going to beat you in the sprint. Um, and at Utrecht Ludwig, it, for her, it was all about hanging on and, you know, getting on the podium because she wasn't going to beat either of them in a sprint. So, uh, you know, it was it was a fairly predictable result in the end with those three. But it did look in the final kilometer or two kilometers that it might the group behind might even come back. You know, close to about ten seconds at one point. Well, I actually thought that they might that chase group might have done better than they actually did because you got some real time trial power and that group was like Chantal Blug, mm -hmm. who's amazing at time trialing, uh, 
Van Dijk was in there and Nivea Doma, who's obviously incredibly strong more on the climbs than as a time trialist. And then but Van Dijk in great form as well. She yeah, won midweek. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I would have thought that with all that power and, and you know, um, at least Blark and Van Dijk both have team time trial uh, gold world championship medals. So you'd think that they could have worked together a bit, uh, especially as Bert Zolo was in that group, who is a, a a virtue rider which is the same team as Bastianelli's so obviously she was trying to disrupt the chase but I would have still with that thought that that firepower as we have often seen um, in Flanders in the past that yeah. that firepower would have caught those leaders they were the team of the day weren't they virtue cycling mm. you know a rider up the road a rider in the chasing group that's the perfect scenario and they're maybe one of the you know sixth or seventh most likely teams to to, to manage that you would have said at the start a team that was missing was CCC uh, and Mariana Voss, yeah. of course, had uh, punctured. She looked, she looked strong. Ashley Moon and Passy as well. Um, I either crashed or had a mechanical, but she wasn't there. And I think if those two had been there, and perhaps in that chasing group, it might have been a different scenario. I really fancied Mariana's chances actually going into today. It was a shame to see her putting her hand up towards the end of the race and, and calling for assistance because of that mechanical. And it was right when that attack happened, wasn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, well? yeah. The, right the worst possible moment for her. Um, but we did manage to catch up with uh, the three podium finishers after the race, and Chantal Black as well of Bowles Dolmans. Here's their take on the day. Your first time on the podium of Flanders and it's the top step that must feel pretty special. I think it's uh, it's very nice for me, incredible surprise. Not much surprise because it's the coronament to the good conditioning uh, from um, to na from now to and I think um, nothing. I, I am very happy for me and my team. Annemiek, it's hard to know whether to say congratulations or commiserations after a second place. How do you feel with that? Uh, last year I was super happy with the third place. I really celebrated that one. Uh, at the moment I'm a bit disappointed. Uh, but if I, I think I'm also proud of my team and of myself. I tried everything. I went full gas on the paddlework and I think it was just not the race. didn't suit me so well. Like I was one of the, there were not so many girls like me that really like a hard race on every climb. There were too many teams that we would like to have a conservative race to be there in the final. And then it's hard to drop girls like Bastianelli. So when when I arrived on the top of the Paderberg, we went all out uh, together with uh, Cecile Utrup. And then I saw that Bastianelli was also there. And yeah, you know, it will be very hard. And yet this is the closest that you've come to the win since 2011. So it must be bittersweet, I guess, at this stage in your recovery, really. You should still be recovering from knee injury, from knee surgery. Yeah, and I know they're like, that's a good thing of like the spring classing. There's, there's more to come. It's not <laughs> finished yet. So uh, I think uh, we should get confidence out of this race and uh, just uh, bring the next uh, and dance week is a really big target of me. And uh, yeah, they're also... Uh, I hope there are more girls. Anna, will, Anna van der Breggen will be back. She also doesn't like conservative race, so we'll, uh, we'll see. How crazy is this race? You know, it's just... <laughs> I, did, I actually didn't... I mean, especially on the Quaraman, it was crazy. I mean, I also enjoyed... Enjoyed. <laughs> I was going full gas up Paddlesburg. But um, oh, the Quaraman... But you can just, you know, you just hear them screaming. Like you can't hear yourself thinking. It's just, ah! and you're like, ah, ha, ha, me, I go. Ah! <laughs> and you know, even though ah, it's pain and you have ah, like acid and both, and like up to here, but you just, ah, one more, one more, one more, one <laughs> And then ah, ah, you're on top. And then they go full gas. Ah! And then, ooh, round, 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 round. <laughs> Oh, but it was so cool. <laughs> it was so cool. And like, I was fresh because the whole team was working, you know, fucking hard the whole day. I mean, and then getting dropped, but coming back again, you know, one more pull ah, to the front, you know. How crazy is this? Like, the team were doing such a good effort. Like, ah, oh, and that, you know, when, when you have the whole team backing you up like that, you just, okay, now it's my turn, I put the hammer down, you know? <laughs> oh, but it was, it was so cool. The atmosphere was so cool. And you know, it's also about, not only the girls did a crazy effort today, but it's also about, you know, the swannies who do the massage. It's all about the mechanics. The bike was excellent, you know, everything was ting, ting, ting. And the sports director, ah, 
guiding me over the radio, you know, motivating me all the time. So it's just, ah, oh, giving him a podium back is like, woo, it's so cool. Do you have mixed emotions today? Because it's a wonderful result, obviously, and a very esteemed podium to finish on the best that you've had here but when you're in that three woman break then you've got to dream of second you've got to dream of first so to finish third is it bittersweet yeah I mean in a moment you believe like maybe I, I maybe I can win you know you're like Haha. but then you know also yeah but finishing on a podium is, is pretty special and yeah of course you know when you're there and when you're you know just us three, you're like, ah, you know, you can taste the victory. You can, uh, uh. but um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the result. And the way you achieved the result as well, we've seen you a few times this season now really attacking on the climbs and showing a growing strength there, I think. Do you feel that you're developing as a rider in that sense? Definitely. And you know, being able to animate the race is just so cool. Like the energy you get from going full gas and just being in front of the race it's crazy you know you just ah you have that confidence you have that ah, people are cheering and ah, that's just can't really describe it you know that's what that's what it's all about you know ah, having that feeling and being there and not just sitting in but trying to do something that's cool that's racing that's what we like Congratulations, Cecily. Thank you. Thanks. Did you think you were going to come back there in the last kilometre? It looked like the gap was closing quite quickly. Yeah, you never know, of course. Uh, in the front, they look at each other uh, for the win. And we have nothing to lose, so we keep fighting. And a frustrating day, though, for the team. I can see from your elbow, you, you had a crash, but a lot of you fell down today. Yeah, we were with the whole group together, and then uh, we crashed in the roundabout. Um, well, that was in the beginning of the race, and I think uh, we did a really good race with each other. There's so much more to race day than just the racing. While you're watching the riders at home, there's a whole circus essentially taking place here. So we decided to film our very own Tour of Flanders to give you a bit of a flavour of what it's all about. Already in the 90 minute drive to get here, I've heard pretty much nothing but race preview on the radio. To say that today is important to the people of Flanders, I think is something of an understatement. The excitement, the fans, the sense of organized chaos, the racing itself, of course. Everything I've heard about Flanders leads me to believe it is another level. Oh. underway the riders are out tackling the worst that the roads of Flanders can throw at them and here looks like the fans are getting ready for a big day of their own. being at a bike race is it's almost impossible to follow the bike race. We're all crowded around my little um, rather grubby iPhone uh, screen trying to watch what's happening. This is our makeshift office. What have we made of it so far, guys? There hasn't been loads going on, actually. There was like, quite a few crashes, which was quite surprising. Not been loads, but it seems to have exploded just now on the Quermont. And at the moment, oh, well, I'm just seeing a lot of pixels. <laughs> I believe behind the pixels is the Paterberg. Uh, where it will be being, this will be really decisive now for the whole race. Cecilia Trebudvig is going to try and attack him this time, but it's still quite a long way from the top of the climb to the finish. And for a rider like her, probably not going to be able to ride away from everybody, but she's doing a pretty good job of it at the moment. She is actually. Let's get to the finish line and see actual riders in action, shall we? Yes, let's do it. Now 
he goes down to meet Van Vluten. Marta Bastianelli is only a few hundred meters. She's got it. Marta Bastianelli wins the medal. You're listening to the cycling podcast, Femina. Such a pro. Dad, that's after seven hours of talking absolute rubbish to tell as well. <laughs> Well, I think it looked like we had fun. We did, didn't we? It was good. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. did. Richard's always a little bit of pressure. Trying to be right. cool. there at the end of the day. Right, <laughs> well, what's brilliant about this race is just the size of it. It's one of the races in the calendar, obviously, where they combine the women's and the men's races on the same day. And it's the eternal debate, really, as to whether that's better or whether we prefer a standalone race as we get with the women's tour. What's our thinking on that? How do we think Tour of Flanders does in particular on that on that level? Well, I think uh, for Tour of Flanders particularly, it's really exciting. I mean, even if you're just here in Aldenada, where we are now, then you get to see the women start here, then you see the women come through here, you see the men come through here, the women's finish, and then the men's finish. So that's a whole day of some really exciting action. And in that way, you're you know getting equal access to the women's and the men's race by just being in, in one spot. So here it works really well, but the, the time difference, I mean, it's not the same course that mm. the men and the women do, which I think is one of the factors, and that's where maybe some races c become unstuck. And also the, gaps between them they the men's and the women's race finish about two hours apart and then whenever you see them on the same bit of course they're about an hour apart so logistically that's much uh, easier for the race organizers yeah, it works well in terms of timing i think here compared to something like the tour de yorkshire where you've got the women's finish five six hours before uh, the men's finish um, the one thing i would say about here is is they don't really promote the women's mm. race very much and so it is really in the shadow of the men's race and that's always a danger when you bring the two together isn't it? Well it's, it, you can't really follow it you know yeah. there the, the, the mm -hmm. are lots of big screens screens in pubs here you can't you couldn't really watch it and um, it was very hard to watch there was live streaming it was on one of the channels in Eurosport but you had to make a big effort to watch it and certainly nobody was helping you around here to watch it and so when you see a, a race uh, finish and you don't know what's happened mm -hmm. in the race it's dislocated from any kind of context so you don't you don't know what's gone on and you don't you're not invested in it in the, in the way that you are with the men's race, which you've watched unfold over the whole day, and then it comes to a climax here in Udenard. So that's a big problem. Um, and I, I don't know, I, 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 there's always the, the, the problem of it not being the main event. And, mm. and, and when the women's race is the main event, it's very exciting. You know, we've seen that the women's tour, even at the World Championships, when you have the women's road race a day before the men's road race, there's a real sense of excitement around that. Everybody who's there is there to watch it. You can, you can watch it on the screens and so on. So I prefer uh, men's and women's races to be separate. And yet we still have more and more clamour to bring the two together. Mm. We want, I say we, the, the common thinking is we want a woman's Paris-Roubaix. There's still talk, um, never ending it would seem, of a woman's Tour de France. Why? Why do people want the two to be brought together then? I think it's a case of it's kind of like there's ready-made exposure. So mm. the whole argument around, say, like the Tour de France is that you have these huge audiences and, hu in principle, there mm. you have these huge audiences and huge crowds. And, you know, I have to say that the riders always say that the crowds are amazing. And uh, like Cecilia Trip Ludwig was saying, you know, about the noise. Remember, Elisa Longo-Borghini once said to me, like, 
just the it's like a wall of sound and it's also like you just smell all these sausages and beer and everyone having a good time at the side of the road and so you're kind of by putting a women's race where a men's race is you're capitalizing on that ready-made audience but it's a case that's of how the theory, yeah that's though, the theory it? yeah. but it's how it's handled um then and how much uh yeah how much focus is put onto it it's presentation as well though and and you know if you go in and watch a band uh you're going to pay less attention to the mm. support act, even if the support mm. act years later proved to be better than the, the main act. And so it's just the way that things are presented. The women's race is always presented as the support act. And so therefore, in people's imaginations, it is the support act. It's, it's, and I don't want to say inferior, but, it, but it's, it's not the main mm. show. Um, <clears throat> Can that ever change that? Well, I, I think I, I personally, I mean, I do, I, I, I can see the argument, especially with La Course at the Tour de France, because mm. it's a it's a little bit different, and uh, you know it worked well last year because uh, it happened and, uh, and you know the whole race was run really before the men's race started, so people were able to watch it and enjoy it. <clears throat> and at the Tour de France, you've got a big crowd there for many many hours. But why at the Tour de France? Tour de France is why why couldn't the women's race be the day before the men's mm. race? For example, you've got the sportif. Um, mm. Don't know if that would be a problem or not, but it means there are lots of people around. And I don't know, I think that might work better. Well, there's no doubt about it, it is a huge race on the women's calendar, regardless of whether it's seen as a support act or not. And we promise you at the top of the programme an exclusive look inside one of the team's race days. Well, Tiffany Cromwell is one of the most seasoned, dynamic and, let's face it, cool riders in professional women's cycling. So we were delighted when she agreed to do this little exclusive feature for us. This is Tiffany Cromwell and Canyon Trams, Tara Flanders. It's not a sport that you can get bored easily. You always have to think, you have to be focused. You know, there's so much going on. You have to think in the moment. You need to race with both your heart, your mind, and, you know, your physical abilities. This, this race requires high concentration and knowledge of the circuit any single time. There are some, some moments at the beginning where you can let more loose on your concentration, but especially the parts that we are studying now. This is where you need to be sharp in the race, where you need to know what's coming. bike rider I am has always been like an aggressive type bike rider, take the chance, take the opportunity. Haven't necessarily always been a big winner, but the race that I have won have been, you know, quite special ones and I've won them by taking that chance, you know, seeing opportunity, being aggressive. This is what we eat for our pre-race, no, it's in the race. Made with love by Alessandra. Yeah, more or less. Our wonderful Sonia. Yeah. They're very tasty at the rice cakes. Just one of many things that we eat. How do you feel for the pre-race? Fueling up. Yeah. Carol? Yeah. What's your favourite? Oops. Oops. I always enjoy yeah. the homemade Twix bar, a brownie. Oh, oh. Cheese more is good. And there's some scones. Or scones, yeah. It's yeah. like just a um, sharing party. Tell me what's your favourite then. Okay. okay. <laughs> Pre-race day, we have chocolate. We've escaped from the hotel because you start going stir crazy after a while. We got some coffee. How are you guys feeling ahead about nice tomorrow? Cakes. Yep, Kasia, Alionka. Yeah, Kasia, feeling ready, loaded for tomorrow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. Like, what do you think? Are we ready with one, two, <laughs> three, four? <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. We're chocolate loaded. At least that's going to help us because Belgium and chocolate go hand in hand. It's the winning formula. The pasta, some carbs. Italian pasta. We always love that. Always. Italian's the best, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I sit next to her. Well. Yeah, the tread my very dad, my carefully. Ready. I just shut up. Yeah, perfect. So we've hit the time of day where it's generally the post-lunch siesta for some. Uh, for me, I'm not really much of a napper, so I do have a book. I don't normally read much. A bit of Karl Lagerfeld. May rest in peace. Watch some Netflix. Do as little as possible. Don't have any nervous energy and just relax and take it easy. What are you going to do for us, Lars? What I do? What's your job? Massage. Yeah. In one minute. <laughs> I'm coming. Oh, 
The Rond is here. We've got team presentation this afternoon. Everyone's excited. <laughs> Smile. Who would have thought there's going to be sunshine? Hello, team. <laughs> What's your mantra for tomorrow? Full gas all day? Yeah, for sure. I guess we have uh, no other chance on this uh, roller coaster course. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to get it. Get ready night before the race. We have to pack the bag, make sure it's ready to go. Shoes, one white set. I do have a black pair too in case the weather turns bad. Wash bag after the race. The skin suit for skin suit Sunday. I like to roll all my stuff. A couple pair of Oakleys, um, depending what I feel like wearing on the day. Heart rate monitor, white socks, a long sleeve jacket. For the morning, I will throw in a thermal jacket, but it's currently washing. And sports bra, keep everything in check, you know. The merino base layer, or just a normal base layer. Some coffee capsules, they're a bit stronger and higher quality. Garmin, race numbers, 56, watch out. And our race book for a bit of last minute studying. And I just gotta go out there and try to win this bloody bike race. I'm serious coffee drinkers. <laughs> Grinding for the morning. Yeah. The grinder always grinds. <laughs> this is a legit setup for those who can't bring an espresso machine. You know how much that skill costs? Probably more than an espresso machine. No, no. <laughs> it was it was ninety dollars. Oh, impressive. Yeah. Lex knows how it's done. Race morning. Bags ready. Time to go and be warriors. Yeah. How are you going to eat today? Oh, we look a lot. Lunch with SAS. I know. Uh, I SAS salami taste. <laughs> then. Uh, I know. I'm going to eat my suitcase. Big suitcase. Um, gonna French fries. <laughs> Delicious. Pike lunch. <laughs> Um, after a long discussion with my roommate, I decided to wear this jersey, which currently <laughs> weighs like three kilos, <laughs> three bags of flour. Awesome. Yeah, Kasia, I hear you. We ready to go crush some bitches. We have Lisa Klein, Elena Cecini, and Alina. Calm, we're confident. You know, we got a good plan, and we're ready to go into battle, as they say. When the business happens, we want to be the business. from the Ron Van Vlanderen, another edition. You know, our race star from Canary Bird, like most most teams, and you know, I did a decent attack into there to get things going, and then, you know, we had Kazia, Lisa, and Eleanor from then on out, you know, to battle it out at the front, and yeah, in the end, they just didn't have the legs to go when the critical moment went, but, you know, I think as a team, we can be proud of our race, you know, everyone did their part, and we executed the plan as we wanted, and yeah, we'll try again next year. 
So that's it, Flanders done and dusted. Some very exciting racing coming up though, of course. We have the Ardennes Classics to look forward to that week of three races in and around the Ardennes area, starting with Amstel Gold. And Rose, you've been devising reasons to watch Amstel Gold, haven't you? I have, Ola, and for this, I will need a trusty bag of props. Wow! Like magic. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's his amazed face. Wow! Okay, well, you know, that might not have amazed you, Richard, but you'll be happy with this. My first prop. Dun, 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 dun. There's Ooh, hair on nice it. Watering. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. An Thanks Easter for egg. He said chivalry's day. There we no, go. Oh, there was one for me. Thank you, Rose. Uh, an Easter things. egg. Well, yeah, I'm. Well, no, I'm not. I wasn't <laughs> going to talk, but <laughs> that's the primary reason why I'm doing with these Easter eggs. But you guys, well, okay, all right, you've already eaten it. Um, yeah. And the gold race, getting to it finally, is at Easter this year, which is very rare because Easter is very late and normally Easter weekend is normally during what they call the Holy Week, mm -hmm. which is Flanders Roubaix and men's cycling. Uh, so more reason to get a load of chocolate in, all your friends and family around and watch Amstel Gold Race. Um, you think We're that might be... Chocolate, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just wait for my colleagues going, to, going, going. to uh, finish. But no, the next uh, prop is going to be a sound effect. Wait for it. And that, in case you don't know, is the sound of a cow. No expense spent <laughs> in this program. I could have wanted to bring out a whole I mean, cow. Okay. A so, few, few issues here. Amstel Gold Race isn't in the Ardennes. The Easter okay, eggs I are said, very, very small. I said in and around and the, the Ardennes. And, and Coburg isn't spelt cow. <laughs> I haven't told and you that And it's nothing to do with okay. the cow either. It's nothing okay. to do with the cow, but Cowburg, that is the centrepiece. Such for a the... fun sponge. <laughs> <laughs> going rose. You were happy for a while with the chocolate, mm. but the Cowburg. Give them some <laughs> more. <laughs> Keep them quiet. <laughs> the Cowburg is the centrepiece for the Amstel Gold Race. It's where it's the, it's something like a, at least 11%. So it's a really oh, steep boy. climb. It got some great crowds and because it's Easter weekend, it'll be bound to be even louder and more rowdy. But it's actually not where a lot of the action happens in Amstel Gold Race. So like a, a lot of the time, it's only been run twice for women before and Anna van der Breggen's won both. But in those cases, it's been more innocuous paces in the course that actually the decisive move has been made. But the Kalberg is the centerpiece and the place where everyone will be definitely on their guard and it definitely whittles down the pel peloton. You get someone like Kasia Nivea on the front there and a lot of riders are struggling to stay on her wheel. Do you have more props? I do. One, one wave, one and final, final prop. Boom! <laughs> that got you watching. <laughs> that is to represent how exciting the Amstel Gold Race <laughs> is going to be this year because we've got a great rivalry in Annemiek van Fluten and Anna van der Breggen. And we haven't seen them much riding against each other this season, so that is going to be really exciting. I'm really excited about watching, about seeing Anna van der Breggen coming back again. And I know you said that sometimes it's more exciting almost when the two aren't racing, but when you get them together, it always, um, it always gives a focal point to the race, doesn't it? And the racing, and, and they are the two riders that everybody else then is watching. And it just adds, a, I don't know, a superstar quality, I think, mm. to the racing. What about you, Mr. Pedder in the corner? <laughs> yeah. If you're, if um, you're going to criticise Rose's no, reasons eating. for watching, what are yours? Um, well, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think Bulls Dolmans uh, <laughs> certainly need her back, don't they? Mm. they? They've been a bit neutered without her, I, I think, struggling. Uh, they've had a lot of top ten finishers, but just not at yeah, the top step. Yeah, yeah. and Yip van den Bosch, who we heard mm. from in the cycling podcast, she won uh, Salmon uh, earlier, but that's been one of their uh, one of their wins. They haven't had too many, certainly in the Women's World Tour. So they need her back. And um, I think Amstel Gold Race is, is, the, is the best of the upcoming races from the point of view of, of the women. Uh, you know, the other two races, Liege by Stone Liege and Flesh Alone, are organised by ASO, mm -hmm. who organised Tour de France. And I think there's a feeling that they don't put quite as much into promoting or, you know, making the, the women's races as easy to watch as the Amstel Gold Race organisers do. And watching that race on TV, it's always had a great atmosphere. Lots of people, as you say, on the Cowberg, and it's been a really good race. So I think of the three, I think Amstel Gold Race could be the 
could be the best. Now we heard from her earlier and we saw just how excited she got to finish in third. Do you think this will give a chance to Cecilia Jabudvig to top the podium and, and explode with excitement and energy? God knows what, how she'll react if she wins. But, <laughs> oh, uh, amazing, she, wouldn't it? She's, these, are the, these are the races that should give her the best chance of, of winning. You know, she was brilliant mm. at Binda, she was probably the strongest climber there. She, she kept attacking and almost getting away and not quite. And she still finished third in, in quite a big sprint, which was a great result for her. Um, we saw it to her fans as well, how strong she is. Mm. And so I think on a course, and maybe Flesh Alone could be the one that suits her best, but Anna van der Breggen is going to be very hard to beat. Well, you mentioned the Cycling Podcast Feminine, which is our usual home. And one of the things that we like to do there is nominate a peddler's de charm uh, from certain races. Now, this is a rider who stood out for any number of reasons. Someone who's animated the race, for example, or um, simply done something exceptional uh, on the day. It's not necessarily, and in fact, it's not the race winner. Um, but in the past, we've had Cecilia Trip Ludwig. She's won um, the Peddler's de Charm t-shirt. We've had Leah Kurtzman of Sunwear. We've had Abby Van Twin. Whisk uh, of drops previously, now of Trek. And Richard, you were going to go for a pick from the Tour of Flanders. Who's your pedal? Who's your charming pedalers? I think Annemiek van Vluten, uh, second in the race. Uh, someone we're used to winning now. And I thought she was a very gracious runner up. Mm. Um, also, the fact that she told you she listened to the cycle <laughs> podcast very well. That's she or she? That swung, that swung it for me. But she's been quite a. Quite a a tough, sort of impenetrable interview. Mm. Uh, I've found certainly at, at times in the past very focused on the race, and you know, you, you interviewed her a lot around Rio when she had that terrible crash during the Olympic road race, and found her, I think, to be uh, so incredibly focused on the next target and, and unwilling or reluctant to reflect on on the crash. And you know, it was a crash that that a lot of people witnessed and were worried about. So um, she's been quite a tough interview at, at times, but I find her. Certainly, in your interview with her, she was she was quite different, quite um, quite open and, and, and warm and, and light-hearted and a slightly different enemy Van Vluten. And I thought for her to be in um, such a sort of positive frame of mind after finishing second uh, was 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 nice to see. So well, peddlers de charm. Excellent. Well, I'm sure Annemiek will be delighted to get a peddlers de charm t-shirt as extra consolation for her second place at the Tour of Flanders. But that is it uh, from us for now. If you have liked what you've seen, then leave us a, a comment below. And if you want to hear more about us whittling on about women's racing, then you can find us in our usual home of the Cycling Podcast Feminine. But for now, Rose, Richard, thank you very much. Thank and you. And thank you for watching.